Yeah. Hey guys, Natalie here, and welcome back to Hey, It's a Good Life. I'm so glad you're here. Today, I have a very special video for you. Today, I have an interview with Justin Rhodes. Today, I talk with Justin about all things family, farming, business, and how to keep going even when life throws you curveballs. We've got cows bellowing, children playing, and even a little wind up in the audio track. And despite all the real raw background noise, this video is chock full of nuggets of wisdom. I asked Justin my real questions and his answers were surprisingly simple. Be encouraged friends. Your homestead dreams are worth chasing no matter what season you're in. It's real. It's raw. It's good. Let's hop into this interview. We're not out here milking cows. We're out here making a movie about milking cows. <laughs> That's right. So you're on the tail end of having your babies. Yes. And you even have help. Some of your babies help. Yes. We're on the front end of that. And I'm looking at the front end of at least another probably 10 years of yep. feeding and raising and birthing and all of that. and. Yeah. How do you find what's sustainable, or how did you find what was sustainable for you on a physical, emotional level? Yeah. But also hit that sweet spot of this is providing for our family and 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 the joy too, like the enjoyment of it. There has to be some level of that for you too. Like I'm a vlogger. I'm not a how-to guy necessarily. I I vlog for the most part, or for for you that is. Yeah. So I'd love to know more about how you found that. A fellow was here uh, at the butchering the other day and he said, you know, what is the, what was the biggest struggle or time period? And let me tell you, Natalie, <laughs> I'm over it. And you're about to go into it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, it was when the kids were young yeah. and we were trying to do this. It's very, very difficult because you're trying to raise them uh, they they're very needy, as Hold you know, that and there we go. not very helpful <laughs> as far as getting stuff done on the farm is concerned. And um, it's tough. You're not you're not getting a lot of sleep. Mm -hmm. uh, and <coughs> this is one way to get through that. Mm -hmm. Katie, <coughs> this is one way to get through that. Katie, bar the door. <coughs> Don't do anything else. <laughs> Try to just uh, focus on the. Pro uh, you, well, you have to have a goal first of all, and it sounds like you have a goal. So you have a goal for your life, but then uh, you have all these ideas to get you to that goal. And let's just take homesteading for example. You might have all these ideas to do all these different kinds of animals or whatever. But then what you have to do? Get in, come milk. I'm barefooted. Okay, so what we're going to do here, Natalie, I'll get back to your question in a sure. second. We're going to empty this so that if she does knock it over, we won't cry as we spill milk. There you go. <laughs> okay. You want to know the secret to getting up at 5 in the morning? <laughs> Going to bed at 8. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and with a kid, it might be even earlier. But then, here's the thing. Uh, chances are, if you have 10 things on your list, of, to get that, that you think are going to get you towards your goal and you prioritize them and you only get two of them done chances are you're going to get 80% of your work from just those two it's called the 80-20 rule oh we like that priority list yep and just know this is this is you also have to push through and keep going even though it's hard and you don't need to give up and you need to have something. Mm -hmm. Even if you have to downgrade or not do as much as you want, do something. Mm -hmm. Because your kids want to help now and at a young age. They're no help, but you've got to let them help. Mm -hmm. And uh, once they help and enjoy it and are having fun and are allowed to help, even though they don't help, just plant 25% more than you would have. <laughs> because they're gonna step on them, they're gonna pull them up when weeding, they're gonna do all that. But it's important that they enjoy it and then they uh, associate it with something fun and you invest in them. You have to change your mind, talk about mindset. It's an investment. You're, you're letting them help and then when they're 14, they're gonna be killer help, okay? 
They're gonna be running the place and you're gonna be asking them what to do. We're gonna change it from, oh, I've gotta get X amount of vermicomposting from my worms. Mm -hmm or X amount of eggs, or X amount of gardening. That's great, we can still have goals there, but um, what we need to remember is, we now have chiddlers, and nobody out there would say they aren't our first priority in, uh, in the house, in the family, right? Mm -hmm. So we have to remind ourselves that we're not out there to, grow some cabbages we 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 you know feed the chickens whatever i'll say it like this because people will say justin does filming slow you down from doing the chores absolutely yeah i mean 10 15 20 percent slows me down but i'm not at when when i decided that i wasn't out there just to do the chores i was out there to make a movie about the chores it changed everything so you're not out there to grow the garden, you're out there to grow a chiddler. Mm -hmm. And if they're your first priority, of course you still garden because they can help accomplish that goal, but it helps you not get so overwhelmed when maybe you don't meet your expectations in the field. That is a conversation I've had to have with myself recently. Mm. Now I imagine that you're a numbers guy to a certain extent and you watch analytics and stuff are you empty over there um yeah it kind of feels like it actually getting close save that thought because we're gonna have to yeah. get the calf on and then we can go at it again so how did you decide that you wanted to be a vlogger <laughs> Well, we were market farming and we slowed down because of Lyme disease. It slowed us down mm. and we had to downsize basically to a homestead, oh. real minimal homestead uh, because we loved growing it for ourselves and that's about all we could do. But I still wanted to be in the movement, so to speak. I still wanted to be a professional. I've always been, that's been my entrepreneurial trend. I find a passion and I try to make a living at it. I don't just, I just can't just do anything for fun. <laughs> Gotta make a go at it. And uh, we found, we blogged at first, so we got the book for our work week, a mentor gave it to us. And that opened up our eyes to this whole idea of professional online content creation. And a mentor, or um, Rebecca caught a viral video where the man found out the woman was pregnant. And, you know, he had put it in the toilet or something, the test in the toilet or something. And so he got to reveal that they were pregnant. Normally the woman gets to do that. Well, that video went viral. And she caught wind of it. And then she said, she was just curious about what more was there. And she found this vlogging family had nothing to do with farming or homesteading. And we're like, well, maybe that's what we could do for our content creation. And at the time we were doing blogging, writing, right? Mm. We'd write these epic articles, three to 4,000 words. And it was good, and it was it was growing our business, but it wasn't. <clears throat> well, we didn't know this till after we vlogged, but it wasn't fun. So it's harder to write and get interrupted with chiddlers. It's um, it's, and when we found and, and and it's, they can't like be a part of the blog post as much as. Um, as they are involved in our lives. So when we found blogging, it was actually good when a child interrupt because it was entertaining. Mm. It added a dynamic. You could see this other character. And we found out when you edit a video, it's not nearly as, you don't have to concentrate nearly as much as in writing. Mm. And this was the best part, Natalie. Rebecca would always proof my blogs, but she would always proof the vlogs too. And every time she would watch one of my vlogs that I created, guess what would happen? She would smile oh. and laugh. <laughs> and I don't remember her doing that at one single <laughs> blog post. Mm -hmm. So, and you know, it took off. We just started as an experiment. We love to fail a lot, but we love to fail small. So that means we like to try different things, but in a small way. Mm -hmm. 
So what would it hurt if we if we put up a, a vlog? You know, three four hours a day, uh, committing to that for a while. If this is what we're trying to do professionally, that's worth it. See if it's going to fly. Before that, I did periscopes. I did live periscopes, and right did did over a hundred. And it never really flew, but I put a lot of time and energy into it. I'm sorry, you have, you'll have to tell me what a periscope is. A paris, yeah, you, 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 oh, it's for all so old people. It was the first live streaming platform. It was from Twitter. Oh, okay. okay. Now you can live stream on Instagram, on Facebook, on, okay. on YouTube, but that was it. That was the first big live streaming. And all, the, all my business guys that I followed, uh, we're saying that was going to be the big thing, you know, like TikTok now is the big thing. Mm -hmm. Well, Periscope was going to be the big thing. Well, it turns out it wasn't. <laughs> so how do you balance that when you're, you kind of got like a business idea or a strategy in mind and then the next big thing comes along and you're like, hmm, you know, is this something worth pursuing? That's a good question. It all goes back down to goals. Early on, I would get my Moleskine notebook. And at the top of it every day, and do it the night before if you're not a morning person. Forget the morning, uh, the, the 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 morning miracle. If you're a, if you're a night person, do your journal at night, and write down your goal on top of the page. And this was business oriented, so I would say I wanted 4,000 email subscribers or uh, whatever, 100 customers, and then I would write down my ideas and opportunities that were presented before me. And always, it was always one that our, our main one was create that content uh, and we would spread it out, you know, Instagram, YouTube and whatever. But, you know, you find traction and so it ends up taking off with YouTube. So we're like, oh, okay. And we want to make sure we keep focusing here. If that's, if, if, if putting on YouTube is getting us towards that goal. Would it be worth it to dump this milk? Uh, you could. We're almost done, so okay. maybe not. We are almost done. I think I'm done with mine. I'll finish yours. So you want to, um, again, it's that priority. It's that prioritizing. But you got to have that goal. And then I would have these ideas. And new ideas are going to come to you. New opportunities. But So right now, for example, our goal is members in Abundance Plus. So everything we do, I have to run it through that check of does this get us members? Mm -hmm. And I have a lot of ideas. I, 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 uh, there's 10, 12, a dozen ideas and people give ideas. Ideas are a dime a dozen, Natalie. Mm -hmm. I, I, ideas are not the goal. Mm -hmm. you have, I, ideas are the idea of the goal. You have to go mine for the goal. You have to test out these different ideas. And so, but you, you have to give it some time, just like mining for gold. It's gonna take, you're gonna have to try one area for a good amount of time to know it's going to fly. How do you keep yourself organized? Is there some kind of um, mental structure that you see in your mind? Like, a, for lack of a better word, like some kind of not funnel, but yep. how does it all fit together for you? Time blocks. So discipline has probably been one of the best things for our success. And I've applied what I've just taught you is if, if, if you have this goal, and you have all these different ideas to your goal, then prioritize. And chances are, if you do two of those 10, you're gonna be just fine. I found that especially when I was sick over the last three months and very debilitated. Couldn't even type at one point. But on the top of my list was to an answer member texts. Well, you know, given the fact that I had to just answer with video instead of texting, it all worked out. But if I just got the vlog up, and I did my member text. I did. I did 80% of my my business's engine and success. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And uh, we got by, and we didn't we didn't shrink. We our business continued to grow. So I do that with every aspect of my life. You have to say, morning. I'm gonna go do chores by this time. And if you have from 7:30 to 9:30 or 7:30 to 8. You have to figure out, if you only have 30 minutes, what is the most important chore? Well, obviously, we're valuing our milk, and that's big on our goal, because how long have we spent out here dealing with this milk? Mm -hmm. <laughs> right? But 
The animals help you do that because they like to be milked at the same time every day. So they, they like to help you keep on schedule. Okay. But then we quit by a certain time. So we've prioritized the most important things of the farm during the farm hours. And then when we go inside, what are the most important things of the business? And it turns out you can have a successful and thriving business just putting 20 hours a week on it because you're only doing the most important things. The other things are just frivolous. Now something that Tommy and I are learning right now is the value of teamwork. I imagine that you and Rebecca have a really solid teamwork system managing your life and your content creation and your business and your farms. Farm. Yep. You have to figure out who's, who's doing what. Um, Rebecca has never come out here and milked the cow. I mean, she's milked the cow, but not been in charge of it and made sure it's happened. But guess what? Guess what she's doing right now? She's in there making all our meals for us going away this, to Homesteaders of America. Mm -hmm. Okay? Yesterday, we're trying to figure out the internet. Uh, getting the internet to the people barn. Well, she's the technical person, so guess who's holding the baby while she's trying to figure it out? See what I'm saying? Yep. We, early Maybe. on, learn to question the norm. We don't have normal roles. Mm -hmm. Any given person in this household can be doing the dishes, can be taking care of the baby, can even be doing chores. Rebecca might not milk, but she does the gardening. Okay? So, we break all those molds. At some, at some point in our life, we question. Mm -hmm. I think when we found out milk was crap, it, it, it made us question all the authority in our life. Mm -hmm. And it was, it was the biggest blessing of our life because when you start questioning things, uh, you start finding out who you really are and you really start, you, you start getting away from the mainstream and you get into your groove line and you find a lot of joy there. Kind of went off track from your... Uh... No, it's good. <laughs> so how do you stay organized? Time block? Yeah, priorities? so time blocks and, uh, you know, uh, you know, after... Uh, and then we eat at the same... Okay, we eat at the same time every day. And... Routine. Uh, dear, your routine. You don't have to think about when am I going to eat. No, every day we start getting... We start cooking at four. And another thing is have a, have a theme. We eat tacos on Tuesday. Indian on Wednesday, Indian Wednesday, Fishy Friday, okay? And then you don't have to think, oh, what are we going to have tonight? Oh, it's Friday. We're going to have fish and some sort of side, whatever's out in the garden, right? So there's value <coughs> in simplicity. Is your, is your wardrobe simple too? Yes. Yeah. I only have just a few pairs of pants that I wear over and over again and then uh, several shirts. What else have you simplified in your life that might be different from the norm? Well, for the longest time, we only had one cell phone. We still only have one car. We don't go anywhere. Uh, maybe once a week to appointments that we have to go to. Uh, we supplement our groceries. They get delivered here. Mm -hmm. uh, staying at home makes a big difference when you're rural because town's 30 minutes away. And you got to get ready to go to town. So 15 minutes. Then, then going to town. Then back. All of a sudden... You've just spent an hour and a half driving. Mm -hmm. Now, if you do have to drive, this was a hack I learned early on, listen to an audiobook or listen to a podcast or when you're milking a cow, have a conversation with a friend or, you know, do the podcast or the uh, audiobook. Mm -hmm. So anytime you can, multitask. So then that's how we were talking in my vlog about how to enjoy the process. Well, one way, if it's mundane like this, get some music out here. Have a little party. Uh, we still have to milk and do chores on Christmas. Mm -hmm. And that stinks. We'd like to have some fun, have a break, you know. But we said, how can we make this fun? We made it fun. We get the iPod, we get the, iPod, we get the, uh, the Bose speaker, and we listen to Christmas music. And we make everybody hot chocolate and we put them in mobile mugs and we're out there having a party milking the cow. And then Christmas Day is different and those chores are actually fun that day. Thank you so much for joining us today, you guys. I hope you enjoyed today's video. And if you did, please do hit that like button. Leave us a comment down below and don't forget to subscribe. Those are all free ways to support us. We so appreciate you being here and we'll catch you in the next one.